camera's going to turn me on. There we are. Hello. Good evening. <laughs> well, and I think I'm saying a special welcome also to those who are joining us on Zoom or Facebook Live. We have a few people <laughs> joining us this evening for, uh, uh, and joining those of us who have gathered already to eat pancakes and have a last hurrah before the quiet, reflective season of Lent begins. So welcome to everyone who's joining us on Zoom and Facebook Live. And as we gather, we do so acknowledging that we are on these unceded traditional lands of the Sayulx people, and we are guests and visitors on this land. We hope that you enjoyed the Mardi Gras music that Sylvia was playing as you arrived. <laughs> And uh, it's been long a, a tradition to celebrate in the days leading up to the more serious mood of the season of Lent, in which Christians often observed fasts from certain foods, and thus began the tradition of eating pancakes, a great way to use up the fat and sugar and eggs and other rich foods in the house before the fasting of Lent began. But whether you ate pancakes tonight or not, we are glad you have joined us. And so let us begin our service of worship with prayer. Let us pray. God of feasting, we give you thanks for the richness of life for all in our lives that we have to celebrate. Bless us as we gather together in community, as we enter the season of Lent, may it too be a celebration of life, of an inward journey of contemplation and wondering of learning and exploring, and in all of this, may we grow closer to Jesus, to one another, and to you. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I wonder if uh, there are um, some children who'd like to join me at the front, be a little bit closer up, because I have a couple things to show you up here. So we have a calendar year. Anybody tell me what month we are in right now? What, what month of the year are we in? Who knows? February. Very good. In February. But you know, the church has a calendar too. And we are just moving from one season into another season. As a long season called the season after Epiphany has ended. And we're moving into the season called Lent. And it's a tradition uh, that... As the sun goes down, you're in the next day. So tomorrow is the beginning of Lent, and it begins with a day called Ash Wednesday. But because the sun has already gone down, we are celebrating that we are moving into the season of Lent. And um, so tonight, we're going to do something really special with ashes. And you might have noticed that the sanctuary looks quite different. Those of you who have been here through Epiphany or who were here on Sunday, you might notice some things have changed. I wonder what you see that's different. What have you noticed? That beautiful, that up there, yeah. And what do you think it is? Do you know? What does it look like to you? Any thoughts? It's a, a tomb shape. Do you get that? That it's like looking into a tomb. Mm -hmm. Lent is a season of preparation for Easter, and uh, as we approach Easter, we hear the story of Jesus uh, dying on a cross and, so, and being buried in a, in a tomb. And so that's, and I wonder if you've noticed another co color that's really different. In, in the season after Epiphany, it was green. What do you notice is different? What's the color, maybe? Can you guess? Tyson, purple, very good. You see lots of purple. You see it on the cloth behind me and in the banners on the wall. And purple is the special color of Lent. It's the I'm sorry color. So Lent is a season when we think about things that in our own lives and in the world that are not the way God would, uh, would have them be. So as we continue to look around, you know, those of you out there at the sanctuary and how it's transformed we're going to begin with our opening hymn and the words are going to be on the screen 
so you don't even have to fumble with a hymn book. It's the, the day you gave us, God is ended. Let's sing that together and we can stay seated. dinner, those of us who are here. Yes. Did you enjoy your dinner? Yes. And did you have fun in the hall? It looks like some of you really got into the game of playing uh, Steal the Beads. Yeah? <laughs> there were some people who were particularly good at that. Do you know that there are many places in the world that celebrate Mardi Gras celebrations? The most famous ones are in New Orleans and in Brazil, and they're very colorful celebrations, and people often wear Mardi Gras beads and really awesome costumes. I see some of you have made masks tonight, and there's lots of food and fun, and sometimes those celebrations go on for days and days leading up to. And they often and uh, a parade. So I think there's, oh, I'm fading in and out here. Uh, that is going to oh. on Zoom. <laughs> All right. Just turn this one off. It'll, okay. All right, there. We want to make sure that people on Zoom can hear us, and even though you're sitting close enough to hear me here. So have a look at this picture up here. This is another parade, uh, and, and I wonder what you see in the picture. Do you recognize this parade? What do you see happening in the picture? Do you remember the story about this parade, Drew? It is Jesus riding on a donkey. Do you remember when that happens? It happens... It's quite a few weeks from now on a special Sunday called, do you remember? Because they waved, the people were so excited to see Jesus that they ripped down the branches of the trees. Who remembers what kind of tree? Palm, that's right. And they waved the palm branches. And, and do you remember what they cried out, what they yelled out? Do you remember that word? Anybody? Hosanna, Hosanna, save us, they cried. And they, they cheered, and they were, it, was a, it was a parade welcoming him into the city. And so what do, you, what do you think these things are? I've showed you the branch. These are little bits of palm leaves, yeah. What do you notice about these palm leaves? Does it look like I just ripped them off the tree yesterday? No. It looks like they've died. They're kind of dried up. Yeah, that's right. And um, it, because um, these were used last year in last year's Palm Parade on Palm Sunday, and we keep them because we keep them to burn them. And when we burn the leaves, well, what do you think happens when you put flames on these things and burn them up? What do you get? Ashes. Yeah. And that's what we get the ashes from. Tomorrow is called Ash Wednesday, and it begins the season of Lent. And we use the dried palm branches from last year and burn them to make the, the 
ashes that we're going to put on our heads in a little bit. Now, Keith has just arrived. Perfect timing. Keith, come join me. There's another picture I want you to look at. Keith is going to tell us about a place that he visited in Jerusalem. And I'll just loan you my microphone. Oh, great. And we have a picture of it. What's it called, Keith? Pardon? What's what called? The picture that we're looking at. What's this place? What's well, it, it depends called? who you are, what you call it. <laughs> ah. It comes by different names. Hmm. Now, what does it look like? What do you see in the picture? A wall, it's yes. It's a wall, but it only looks like a wall. It's not really a wall at all. It's, it's a foundation. Many, many years ago, at least a couple of thousand years ago, when they were rebuilding the temple in Jerusalem, they knew that to put it on top of a small hill, it wasn't going to work because the hill was too small. So they had to make the hill bigger, a lot bigger, to put the temple on top of the hill. And so they went to the bottom of the hill and they put great big blocks. And then they filled between the blocks and the hill to make the foundation for the temple. And there is still a kind of a temple on top of that hill today, only it's, it's called the Al-Aqsa Mosque, but it's still up there. And so what it looks like a wall is really the foundation for Temple Mount. And for many, many years, when Jewish people would come to Jerusalem, they would go to that wall and they would pray. And when I went there to pray at the wall, they gave me a hat because I'm a man and you have to have your head covered in the presence of God. Only if you're Jewish, you wouldn't say God. You would say that which we cannot know or name. And so I had to put a hat on. It was called the Yamukkah. And they have special ones for visitors. I have one somewhere in my office, but if you see my office, you might know it's a little hard to find things in there sometimes. So I have a yarmulke in there, and it's a little hat that you wear if you're a man to cover your head. And many people had shawls, and so I brought a Palestinian shawl, it's called a kafia. And they also wear it on their heads, but it takes a special, a special way to, to wear it on your head. If you ever saw a movie about people in the desert where they had something on their heads, it would go like this, and then it would come down and around. There's a special way to tie that. And I haven't looked at the YouTube video in a long time, so I'm not sure how to do it. <laughs> but you would wear a shawl if you were praying at the wall. And there's another thing. There's one side of the wall, one side where the men go, and one side where the women go. And where do you think the children go? Where do you think the kids go? Until they had their bat mitzvah or their bar mitzvah. Where do they go? They go with the mums, yeah. In most, like in, in Islam, the kids, the children hang out with the mums and when the boys become men, they go with the men. Mm -hmm. So when you're there, there are hundreds of people praying at the wall. And they take their prayers and they write them down. I wrote my prayers down. And you leave them in cracks in the wall. Can we see that picture again, that first picture? Maybe you can see the cracks in the wall that people might put their prayers inside. And Keith, you mentioned it has, two, it has a couple of names. Yeah, it's so It's called for, and it's known for many people as the? So for 2,000 years, it was known as the Wailing Wall. Wailing for Wall. For everybody. Hmm. But when Israel became a state and they took this part of Jerusalem and conquered it, they decided they didn't have to wail anymore. We'll just call it the Western Wall now. <laughs> but the people who used to live there, because you can't see it right there, but there's a great big wide open square all the way close to the Wailing Wall. It's where the Palestinian people used to live in a village and their homes were all gone. And so if they were praying at this wall, if they were allowed to, they might still call it the Wailing Wall. Mm -hmm. 
never know. It's different things for different people at different times. So if you went to pray at a wall called the Wailing Wall, I wonder what kind of prayers you might be saying. I wonder what things you might be expressing to God. Do you have any ideas? If you were at the Wailing Wall. True. Sorrow. Mm. You might be crying out to God for things you feel sad about, maybe people who've died, or other things that make you feel sad. Anybody else have an idea at the Wailing Wall of what you might offer a prayer about? Anybody out there? A prayer for help. You might be asking God for help with something that's hard or difficult. Hmm. True? You might pray about anything. It's good to talk to God. And in the season of Lent, we are going to say a prayer every Sunday, a prayer of confession, where we talk about the things that aren't in the world as God would have them be, and maybe in our lives aren't as God would have them be. And we're going to sing a special response, and that's what we're going to learn now, is the response. And Sylvia uh, is going to help us with that. It's called, When You Call For Me. The words are going to be on the screen. Should I just sing it through once, Cheryl? Okay. And when you call for me, I have already answered. And when you call for me, I am already there. And when you to that song remind us that God, that when we turn to God in prayer, we can already be assured that God hears us and is listening and cares for us. So Heath already showed you the scroll, and as you came in tonight to worship, you received a scroll. And I'm going to invite you to just take a couple of minutes in silence to think about some of those wailings maybe in your hearts, things that are not in your life the way that you would want them to be or things that you see in your life or the world that you think are not as God would have them be. And so just take a couple of minutes in silence to think about that and you can write or draw on your piece of paper if you wish or you can simply think about it as you're holding the paper. And there's going to be an opportunity uh, at the end of that silence we're going to be brought back in with Sylvia and the words to our song that we're going to sing through a bunch of times. And as we do that, those who are here in the sanctuary are invited to come forward and put their scrolls in the cross that's over there. There are some, you'll note the cross has some spots, kind of like the wailing wall that you might be able to stick your prayer in. And uh, you can do that from the back or the front or the side. So you don't have to queue up to do that. Uh, you can, we can do that all together. And, um, and those who are online have been invited to have a piece of paper tonight and to also take this time to think about and to write a prayer of confession. And Karen is going to symbolically for us, for those who are online, add your prayers to the cross at the end. So let's take a little bit of time in silence.
Did you know? Did you know? The ashes that we put on our foreheads on Ash Wednesday are made, traditionally, by burning the palm branches from last year's Palm Parade. They remind us that we are people who wave palm branches one day, and then, in effect, we burn them into ashes on the next, as we cannot sustain our commitment to the way of the cross. In biblical times, when people made a public confession of their brokenness, they would tear their clothing. They would put on sackcloth, and they would smear ashes on their head. This is a sign of their deep grief and repentance and loss, and a sign that they were committed to renew themselves in the spirit and to a new and a life-giving pattern in its place. The Hebrew word translated as oil, shemen, literally means fat or grease. Another reason why Shrove Tuesday might be called Fat Tuesday. For the ashes we put on our foreheads on Ash Wednesday are mixed with oil. Although literally meaning fat or grease, figurative Figuratively, the Hebrew word for oil might mean richness. The season of Lent has traditionally been a time when we give up something. We go without, we fast. It may seem counterintuitive, but this year we invite you to focus on the richness and abundance in your lives. Oil has met, had many uses in biblical times. It was burned in lamps to light houses. It was used in food. It was used to anoint leaders. It was used to heal wounds. The ashes, sign of repentance, are mixed with oil, the sign of God's healing, which, spill, which spills forth in our lives in richness and in gratitude. A source of life that cannot be named or contained in any name. You created all things, formed all things. Out of the very stuff of yourself, you sent us your beloved one, the one we know as Jesus, to help reveal your way. We have not lived fully according to his teachings. We have not lived fully according to his example. We confess that your reign of love and justice is yet to be fully manifest within us, within our communities, within our relationships. Bless, therefore, these ashes and bless your people who, marked by them, Make a statement of repentance and new spirit in life. Grant that this might be a symbol, a symbol for us of our inward renewal, a sign of our change and our growth, a first step in nurturing and returning home, back in to the well of your love. Those who are online, I invite you to take some of your oil, dip your finger in it, and join me as you mark your forehead or the back of your hand with the sign of the cross. May you know God's grace. And those here in the sanctuary, you are invited to come forward and be marked with the oil and ashes on your forehead or on your hand as you are comfortable.
In Voices United, number 105, Dust and Ashes. We'll sing the first verse only. It's here. It's also there. <laughs> <laughs> 